Hey, it's the Chief Bonding with Board Games. Today we're looking at a yellow game called Candy Chaser. And I am going to show you kind of, because this is part of the deal I like with this one, they've got a series called mini games that are all boxed the same. But we're going to go in and we're going to look at Candy Chaser. The rules are very simple. Uh, then I'll come out, I'll give you my feelings on that particular game. But before we go into the closer look, I want to talk a little bit about what Yellow is doing with these mini games. So first of all, I dig this. I like when there is a, like a system of games that are all generically kind of looking the same boxed wise. So white background, same size, same thickness, and the art and everything shows you kind of which game is which very symmetrical and then you got your gameplay the length of time how many players i love that and it looks great on the shelf okay yes that's a very nerdy side of it but i love this so you got yellow putting out these quote unquote mini games in a style that i that i like so that alone uh is pleasurable to me maybe to some of you and i like the clean white crisp of the system so let's go in we'll take a closer look at candy chaser and then we'll come back talk about it and then i'll come back a little bit later and do a review on this card game called tempura like purr like a cat with a whole sushi feel but that's a separate game don't worry about that closer look on candy chaser we're talking candy all right these are the components quite simple so board which i'll come back to in a little bit you can see it kind of flexes weird uh the representative quote candy pieces the die which is a, uh, a custom die with simple plus two plus three plus one minus two minus one all right so just small value single die every player gets a uh, set of whoops hello of cards this is not representative of your candy pieces that's what you get from these almost like how when you're playing a trader game everybody these get shuffled everybody gets one this will be my secret color i will be trying to promote blue and get blue to the highest point possible at the end of the game and if i'm at the top I will win that little round, that little 10 minute round. This was probably the only thing a little bit confusing to my kids. They kept thinking, hey, I'm red, I'm red. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is just happens to be your color. Yes, they correspond. And they got different little, the different little like figurines, chibis, whatever. All right. And, but I had to say, and it, it didn't take long, but I said, no, this is your secret color. But of course, here they are matching, but they've got the candy and boom, the candy. So these are going to be slightly off now. So you get your roll, how you play is boom. These are shuffled out to all the players. This is the candy I want to promote kept secret. Everybody else gets one too. These won't be used until you do an accusation. If you so choose on your turn, let me get these a little bit more in place. I'll, again, I'll come back to this flexi board in a little bit. So on my turn, I simply roll and I'm going to promote, I'm gonna move one plus two, if I could turn it correctly, sorry. So I'm gonna be moving any one of the candies plus two. Now remember, I really wanna promote my candy, but if I just come out right away and start doing it, every, and that's the only one I move, clearly that's my candy. And when we get to the tattletale phase, um, they're going to sit there and everybody's going to say, well, someone's going to accuse me of being the blue candy and they would be right. So I might want to simply sit there and move too. Hey, there we go. Goes around to the next person. They move, they move. So there's all this little trickery on which is your real candy. Everybody's promoting it. Sometimes you're moving backwards. Sometimes you're moving forward. It won't focus. Hello. All right, so it's as simple as that where everybody's just promoting and somebody's moving something back. And then the key spot is you'll kind of notice, let me dump these off here for a while. First, I'm going to show you, let me show you, in order to, wow, first I'm going to show you, let me show you, talk about repeating myself. In order to fit everything into these boxes, which I like that they're uniform, they had to fold this game board because it wouldn't fit. 
and the way done was with this so what happens is you can't really over flex it if i did that too much i'm going to tear that paper then i got junk so it always kind of sits on the board a little bit like this or it sits on the table a little bit like this and yeah you can you can kind of weight it down but for a 10 minute game that's not really what you're doing so that's a little bit annoying not bad again i like that it all fits in the uh in the box and you can see it will fl lay flat the problem is it's just been in the box for so long that it doesn't want to but so you can see you got the matching matching candy pieces you can see how they bubbled out this three four five so if candy let me get something closer to each other so if uh, at least two candies get into this this range uh, that allows them to be finally quote unquote moved promoted to the level of G which is the end game maneuver so if this three came out someone could either move another candy into the zone and or you could simply one two boom that stopped the game all the other candy pieces would be on here uh, if I'm the purple candy I'm going to be the winner um, so you're going to be trying to figure out well who is the purple candy and then can we accuse them secretly and get them knocked out? So whoever moves the last piece of candy to G, the immediate player to the left has an option. You do not have to do this, but I have the option of doing what's called tattletail. So I'm gonna be looking here and obviously, let's just pretend that, uh, well, we know I'm blue. So let's say blue's here. For me to win, I'm going to want to eliminate the purple candy and the green candied player. In order to do that, I've got to hopefully know who they are. Uh, so let's just say I'm going for purple. I secretly slide this across the table. Boom, I think the player directly across is purple. They pull it in. They don't tell anybody else. They look. They simply say yes or no. They don't disclose because there's more tattletelling that could go on. So it would blow the game up if you said, yeah, I'm purple, you got me. Well, this person might have thought that person was purple. So they simply say yes or no. If it's no, if I tattled on the wrong player, I'm out. Now, I don't expose my color either. I don't flip it over and say, oh, I was blue because there's more of this intrigue left. If I'm correct, they say yes, you're correct. And I can then have the option of tattling again. Now, again, if I'm ever wrong, I'm out. But maybe I've got a real good idea who green is. I could slide over and accuse this player of being green. Yes, I'm green. Boom. Now they're out. Now, again, they don't remove the piece. They don't say who they are because the player to my left gets a chance if they want to tattle or not. And they may, may think, well, who you know, Bart's done a couple removes here. They both said they're correct, but who are they? But again, part of the game is if I accuse two people, he's got to think, or she's got to think, well, he must have nailed these two. So maybe he's blue. And you could have a player that's yellow that's way down here that then accuses me and I pull it across. Let's make it a little bit more the way it would be. So the yellow player here slides this over to me i pull it open and i tell him you are correct well now officially i'm gone so yellow would win everybody else is you know once we're done nobody else accuses we're all done with the tattletale phase we then reveal what color each of us was and yes yellow got me and i got purple and green so that's the intrigue part again this thing wraps off like super fast um, I've had games go two minutes. You get them in there, somebody pushes it to G, they flip, we do the, well, sorry, there's no flipping, we do the accusing, and then boom, who won, do we play again? All right, we're back, Candy Chaser. So, very simple, you've seen this. You got the one die, you're rolling it. The subtlety of play is actually in that, what I call Princess Bride deal, where it's, would he put the poison in front of himself? You know, would he move his own color on that big die roll? Or, or that one he moved back, could he be moving his own back in order to throw us off? All right, so I love that aspect of it. And the fact that uh, you gotta get two different pieces of candy in that three, four, five range before you can now move one of those to that in-game stage where it goes over. So as soon as that happens, 
Is that the tell now where everybody's now trying to push their color into that area? So the game mechanics, dirt simple. Simple, simple, simple. And I'll come back to that in a second. However, the gameplay is in that what are you doing? What's this person doing? I'm trying to figure out what are they moving? You know, is that theirs? And that matters because once that end stage is done, now you can tell on that person or you can hand them a card that says, I think you're red. And they look at it, they don't expose it because everybody else is still in the play of it. If I'm correct, boom, all right, I've got them. Uh, their, their candy's out. If I'm wrong, I'm out. And everybody has that option of, of doing that to somebody or not. But you've got to be pretty darn sure. Or the, the cool gameplay, I know I'm not in front. I'm not winning anyway. Um, and if I'm in second, maybe I sit back and see if somebody else can figure out who that is and get them out of there if I'm not sure. But if I'm way in the area that I'm way back, I'm last, second to last, heck yeah, I'm going to try to pick out who you are and get you bumped out of there. And maybe I can get myself into the winning circle. And it takes 10 minutes. So that's the gamer game aspect that I like. Great filler. I can get it in and out. Hey, that table over there. Hey, we're done in 15. We're playing, you know, power grid, but we're done in 15. First of all, I'm going to check and make sure they got the right time. I've had people say that and go 45 minutes. Hey, you're killing me. All right, but they're correct. Break out a little filler. It's light, fun. Doesn't matter if you lose. It's over in 10 minutes. Accusations are flying around. Second, I'll use this with my family. My son, Bo is nine, loves it. My wife will join in, great. Seth, seven, Down syndrome. Now he's not gonna get that gamer game aspect, although we're trying to work that in. But a lot of times it's that simple die roll. He can, he can roll regular dice and count up to six. He gets the pips, perfect. He's already got turn order down, games have taught him all that. But now he's, if I can get him in and he's not there yet, where I can teach him the subtleties of, hey, keep yours secret. But right now he's able to join in and it's a 10 minute game because he likes to copy his brother and he wants to get into the turn order. Yes, of course. And we're playing with a little candy. It's candy. <laughs> okay. So it's awesome. And it's just simple. All right. So I like that aspect of it. So my, my nine-year-old son gets it. You can't move your own. There's a bluffing element. Um, so it works great as a family game, very well as a filler game, and I like to use it even to help further my, my youngest son's learning aspect of, of the social interaction, the turn taking, the rolling of the dice, and hopefully at some point in time, I guarantee it, the bluffing aspect in particular of this game, because that teaches that different or that unique level of, of another set of learning. So, Candy Chaser, again, we'll get into tempura here in a second, but I love this. I want a string of eight of these, and I want them sitting on my, my short shelf, and they just, they just look nice, because that's how I, hello, that's how I roll. <laughs> Chief, bonding with board games. See you guys.